Why Science is a Religion that Proves God is Real. So here we have another parody video by State of Daniel, and this one is actually funny. He does a great job of poking fun at some of the most ridiculous arguments people have made, and his delivery doesn't seem fake at all. So yeah, I think this is an excellent parody. That said, I think he does take it a little too far sometimes, and some of his caricatures are just plain unfair. Take the title of his video, for example. It's a dead giveaway. Before you even watch the video, you can tell it's a joke. I know parodies tend to exaggerate the stupidity of the opponent's position, but I think this is a flat-out misrepresentation. Some really moronic apologists will say that evolution is a religion, and therefore not science. So even they explicitly note the distinction between religion and science. And that's why I think this one misses the mark. Most Christians will at least say that they trust science, but they're not going to tell you that they believe in two religions. The second claim is that science proves God. Here he's probably trying to make fun of people like Ray Comfort. Apologists like William Lane Craig are more careful to avoid putting it like this. But tonight I want to defend an even stronger claim, namely that the evidence of contemporary cosmology actually renders God's existence considerably more probable than it would have been without it. This is not to make some sort of naive claim that contemporary cosmology proves the existence of God. So, to repeat, one is not employing the evidence of contemporary cosmology to prove the proposition that God exists, but to support theologically neutral premises in philosophical arguments for conclusions that have theistic significance. Science isn't in the business of proving things. Rather, science judges the merits of competing models in terms of their simplicity, clarity, comprehensiveness, and fit to the data. Now, on to the content of the video. Hey YouTube, I hope all is going well. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's kind of funny that people try to pit science and God against each other as though the two are mutually exclusive. I can't even begin to count and tell you guys the number of times that people have called me anti-science simply because I believe in God. But for me, my deep respect for science and for scientists and all the things that they do actually reaffirms my faith that God exists. And in fact, science and the scientific method are very religious in nature. You see, science categorizes objective knowledge in order to explain or describe the phenomena of the reality around us. But this is only possible Right here he gives the argument. Number one, you believe in the objective existence of natural laws, and number two, believe in the unity of these laws in a spatial temporal continuum, and we can observe these through laboratory experiments. And three, believe in the rational character of these laws that allows you to similarly study and understand them through rational means. So here, science is a form of religious thought because you have to accept these three tenets in order to have a foundation of scientific knowledge. And here's where I think science proves the existence of a higher being because, like I said, to believe in science, you have to believe in the existence of objective natural laws. And as we all know, whether it's the government or a teacher in the classroom, laws and rules are are always enforced by a higher authority. A unified, self-sufficient law system in the universe only exists because we have an intelligent, omniscient, and omnipresent legislator behind it. And for me, that's the God of the Bible. I thought this was a decent parody of the every law requires a lawmaker argument. Here are some reasons why I like this. First, the idea that scientific laws had to be created by a person is hilarious to me. There's this nicely built-in platonic nonsense that scientific laws actually exist in and of themselves when they are really just statements about the world. How does one even go about making these things? Sure, I know what it means to say that a person formed a true sentence, but obviously the thing they're referring to was already the case before they formed that sentence. Let's say there is a world in which every object is a fox. It would be bizarre to suggest that means that a person must have brought the statement every object is a fox into being. It seems that could be the case whether or not there was ever any person. I also like the horrible analogy State of Daniel uses, comparing scientific laws to things like legislation and classroom rules. I mean, obviously we'd expect a person to be the source of rules intended for people to follow. 
My favorite thing, though, is that State of Daniel has used a very comical version of what I like to call the overly broad definition of religion argument. He just states that science is a religion because it is committed to three premises. So basically the argument runs like this. If you accept science, you have to believe in things. Therefore science is a religion because religion is defined as believing in something. And yet another thing I find hilarious is just the fact that the words tenets and religion are meant to be demeaning when this argument is used by religious apologists. Now, here's one thing I don't like about this parody. Let's take a closer look. Notice that he's reading something right here. You see, this isn't actually his parody. In fact, this isn't even a parody. It's an argument by Sergei L. Gullivan. And State of Daniel didn't just take these three points. Now, I want to make it clear that I do not condone plagiarism. I think that if you're going to repeat someone's article verbatim, you should at least cite them somewhere even if you're just trying to look stupid. I will say that it was pretty interesting of him to use a real argument in a parody video, but I just find it totally unacceptable to steal someone's work. Here are the parts that State of Daniel plagiarized. You see, science categorizes objective knowledge in order to explain or describe the phenomena of the reality around us. But this is only possible if, number one, you believe in the objective existence of natural laws, Number two, believe in the unity of these laws in the spatial-temporal continuum, and we can observe these through laboratory experiments. And three, believe in the rational character of these laws that allows you to similarly study and understand them through rational means. A unified, self-sufficient law system in the universe only exists because we have an intelligent, omniscient, and omnipresent legislator behind it. And for me, that's the God of the Bible. By itself, science cannot inherently explain or provide an objective description of what exactly it's trying to examine. When you use the scientific method, you're utilizing a speculative model hypothesis because it's based on primordial presuppositions, aka faith. For example, the Darwinian model is based completely on the speculative principles of gradualism and progress. Faith in the accuracy and correctness of those speculative presuppositions results in the faith being transferred to the correctness of the model itself. Let me give you an example. Let's say that today an atheist scientist ran a laboratory experiment and was able to create live matter out of inorganic matter. Now if that were the case, some people would view this as proof of the Big Bang and that God doesn't exist. But you would also have to remember that in this theoretical scientific experiment, it's scientists, aka intelligent beings behind the scenes, that the experiment is even able to take place. In other words, the only reason that live matter is created out of or inorganic matter is because there is an intelligent being behind the scenes. But those are just my thoughts. But those are just my thoughts. But those are just my thoughts. That's my thoughts. That's my thoughts. And I'd love to hear yours in the comments below.